In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A popular theme in films and books these days is the alternative history. It's something I quite like as well. Maybe you've come across these themes. What if Germany had won the Second World War? What if Adolf Hitler had never attempted to invade Russia? What if binoculars had been brought on board the Titanic? What if Guy Fawkes had succeeded in his plot to blow up the Houses of Parliament? The amazing thing is, history has often unraveled in the way it has, precisely because of small decisions. Things that maybe at the time seemed trivial, but 100 years later, you can see a whole chain of events flowing from them. There's a lovely thing in um, uh, one of Dickens' Dickens's books, um, Great Expectations, where he has a lovely little um, monologue about the effect of a small decision. I think in that book it's the moment that the boy and the girl meet each other and all kinds of events then come from that decision. Perhaps you've heard of the butterfly effect. You know, the idea that a little butterfly flapping its wings in one place could potentially be the first cause leading to a catastrophic cyclone in some other parts of the world. Of course, the theory is impossible to prove, but it makes you wonder about the effect even some of our little choices can have on the world and on the future history. In today's Gospel, here we have one of those decision moments. In this case, the decision is by no means insignificant. We know that now. We are blessed to have almost like a camera in the corner of Our Lady's room, giving us a fly-on-the-wall perspective of that great decision moment. The most crucial, most decisive, most important decision in the history of humanity. Here it is, laid before our eyes. And I don't know about you, but this is one of those passages that I almost seem, almost seems over-familiar to me. I mean, we hear it at all the nativity plays, we hear it at Mass quite a lot of times during the year, and you hear the first word and you think, okay, I know this one, I can sit back. But if we make it to heaven, if we're part of that small number or that big number that makes it to heaven, we will glory in this scene for all eternity. It will fill us with a new joy every time we think of it. It will be our continual delight to look back upon this sacred moment, the moment that changed everything. And here's why it changed everything. Bit of a resume of salvation history. Thanks to Adam and Eve and the first sin they committed, humanity had left God's friendship. The entire human family, all of, the, all of Adam and Eve's descendants, were handed over to the slavery of the evil one. It's like the deeds of humanity, or the ownership of humanity, was passed over to Satan, and there was nothing any human could do about this. The debt of sin was too big for any human to deal with. The offence against God was so great. But in God's mercy, he decided that the second person of the Holy Trinity, God the Son, would take flesh. He would take up a human nature, and that, and that through that human nature, he would offer an infinite act of love and apology to God the Father. This would deal with sin. This would make it possible for humans to leave Satan's empire and become a part of God's new kingdom. And here is when the decision point comes in. Almighty God sent his great archangel Gabriel to bring this proposition to a young teenage girl, Mary. God sent his emissary to offer a peace treaty with humanity. The representative of humanity was this 14-year-old girl. She was the one who had to make the decision. She was the one upon whom the fate and future of humanity would rest. The whole universe, all of creation, awaited to hear what her response would be. In some paintings of the scene, you see the angel putting his finger to his lips as he speaks to Mary. 
He's not telling her to be quiet. No, he's calling to silence all the creatures of the world, the whole universe. He's commanding everything to be still, to hold its breath as it waits upon the response of this girl. Could she have said no? Absolutely. The angel offered a proposal. He offered God's terms. But God is not in the business of breaking an individual's free will. It is his greatest gift to us, and he respects it. He lets all his plans rest on the balance of a free human decision. Of course, being Almighty God, he could see from all eternity what her decision would be. He knew that by the help of his grace, the young Mary would freely choose to accept his peace plan. But nonetheless, in that very moment, she was free. Her arm was not being twisted. All rested on the decision of an insignificant Jewish maiden in the corner of the Roman Empire. And what if she had said no? Here we come to one of those alternative history things. What if? What if Mary had not given her God her free will? What if she had turned down his proposal? What then? If that had happened, if that terrible thing had happened, all would have been lost. You know, it's like, you know, if you think of the Lord of the Rings, if, if Frodo had never got the ring into Mount Doom, what would have happened? All would have been lost. If Mary hadn't agreed, there would have been no incarnation. There would have been no Jesus Christ. There would have been no Christmas Day. There would have been no Good Friday. Every single human would have, every single human would have still been under the weight of sin. A sin that we couldn't have got out of. That would have meant that we would have all faced only eternity away from God in hell at the conclusion of a short and miserable life on earth. What an awful alternative. There's nothing so catastrophic or disastrous. All rested on her decision. There was no plan B. All the chips rested on Mary. The Almighty was all in on this one. All was risked. There would be no second peace envoy. There would be no second visit of the angel Gabriel to another girl. There was only one girl who had been prepared for this moment. One immaculately conceived virgin. She was the only new Eve. That was Mary. And she alone faced the decision, just as the first Eve had made that other crucial decision at the beginnings of humanity. How sad it is to hear people treating Our Lady as if she was nothing more than an incubator. What blasphemy. She was as much involved in our salvation as Eve was involved in our condemnation. Humanity was lost as a result of Adam, aided and abetted by Eve. Humanity was gained back again as a result of Jesus Christ, offering his life on the cross, but an offering aided and abetted and initiated and enabled only with the consent of and free will of the new Eve, the Blessed Virgin Mary. You take Eve out of the story of Genesis, you don't get a fall. You take Mary and her consent outside of the Gospel of Luke, you don't get the incarnation. What a debt of gratitude we owe to Mary, a personal debt of gratitude. Each one of us has a possible responsibility to thank Mary for her vital role in our salvation. And this is the root of all devotion to Mary. She gave Almighty God her yes, her free consent. And like that small butterfly's wings producing some tsunami in a faraway land, Mary's little yes has brought the possibility of salvation to me and you in Southborough 2,000 years later. And for Mary, that choice of hers, that yes, 
It was not made in ignorance. Mary was no fool. She had been born without original sin. And she didn't have the same defects of intellect as ours. And she was perfect in every way. And, and her mind saw very clearly what that yes would entail. She knew the Old Testament. And as the angel spoke of a baby, she saw Calvary. As the angel spoke of joy, she saw the suffering and the sorrow that would also inevitably come her way as a result of her consent, as a result of her decision to become the mother of the Saviour. O oh Mary, perfect mother of God, conceive without sin, glorious new Eve, helpmate of the new Adam, Jesus Christ, I give you my profound and deepest gratitude that while I was dead in my sins, you consented to be the mother of my Saviour. That I thank you that you agreed to provide God with a, hum with a human nature taken from yours so that he could save me. Thank you for all that it cost you. Thank you for, your, for, for, you, thank you for playing your part in giving me the chance of eternal life. Now, Blessed Mother Mary, help me to make my own decisions, my own great decision to accept my part in God's plan, to accept God, what God asks of me, and to imitate your example. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.